we can find a silver lining here, and Kim alluded to this. I remember Dan Ellsberg uh, at least once or twice when he's been on these vigils saying that he expected Julian Assange to spend the rest of his life in prison, in American prison, and most of it uh, in solitary. But as Kim pointed out, the, we actually haven't seen the indictment itself, but there's a press release from the Department of Justice. At least I haven't seen the actual indictment, which I'm keen to read to see if there's anything else in there. But he has a maximum sentence of five years, and the release points out that, uh, first of all, that he's innocent until proven guilty, and that it's rare to have the maximum sentence given. We can imagine- but Can they add charges? I Listen. can't imagine well, that's that. It. That's right. I, I, I believe this is a total. This is a total scam. Yeah, yeah. I don't believe they all spent the, twenty-five million dollars surveilling the embassy to get him yeah. on. All the of Department years. of Justice is trying to achieve with that is the favor of the media, getting the extradition court on board to extradite Julian, and getting the minister in charge who will have to approve the extradition to go along with it. And once he arrives in the US, nothing is going to stop the DOJ from filing a superseding indictment with new evidence, a totally different case, for example, with the CIA Vault 7 leaker or something like that. Uh, once Julian Assange is in the United States, uh, he will never be a free man again. We all need to be absolutely clear about that. You know, uh, Pompeo didn't call WikiLeaks a non-state intelligence service uh, to then let Julian Assange off the hook after three years in jail. That's just never going to happen. Yeah, this was a PR exercise. By yeah, not they, charging him. They, yeah. they have strategized, you know, how, how can we make sure that this extradition is successful so that we get our hands on him and he's in our jurisdiction. And in order to achieve that, they 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 nailed it to a single charge that is quite simple uh, to understand where you can easily create this prima facie case uh, to get him extradited. And none of the judges or uh, the minister will be particularly worried about their own image because it's just a five-year sentence that he's facing, you see? So this is, this is crafted. This has been designed uh, to fool the extradition process, to make it easy for everyone to just go along with it. Once Julian Assange is in the United States, you can be sure the DOJ will have a superseding indictment ready for him. That's why I'd like to see the actual indictment, not just a press release. I had a look at it. I've, I've seen the press release. I, I had a look at it. It's actually, yeah, it's very I, weak. I made a tweet. I, it looked like an April Fool's joke to me. <laughs> all this fuss, all these years, you know, Pompeo's uh, bold statements and everything that came from the U.S. government, and now it's a conspiracy to breach a password. That is the entire charge. It's a yeah. complete joke. And, and guess what? They don't probably even have that. It's an absolute embarrassment for the Department of Justice uh, to deliver such an indictment. You know, that's why they want the Chelsea Manning to testify. That's in obvious. secret in the grand jury to get extra facts on that whether he helped her to steal the password. Yes, Kevin Z. I think you're exactly right, Joe. I mean, I did read the indictment as Kim did. and But I the indictment Kim hasn't did. come out. It's only the press no, release. No, it, no, it is out. The, the, the entire indictment. Out. Yeah, oh, it yes, is. the indictment oh, is out. Okay. And I've, I've read it, and I, I guess Kim has too. And it's quite evident that on the key issue, Assange helping uh, Manning with the password, they don't have the evidence. It's, it's a big gap. In fact, in the uh, indictment, they quote uh, Assange as saying, I can't figure out the, the, the password. Can you give it to me? <laughs> I mean, so it's, I think Kim's right. It's a joke, but it's, unfortunately, it's a joke that opens the door. And, yeah. uh, and, it, and, the, and the, a weak indictment with a five-year sentence is exactly what they need for extradition. It's, uh, it's not going to scare the judges. Uh, it's not going it, to, it, but once, he, once, once Assange is in the United States, we don't know where it's going to go from there. Uh, this is not the only uh, documents. Chelsea Manning's are not the only documents that WikiLeaks has leaked. They've leaked a lot more documents. And there can be indictments on each one of those if they find evidence on them. So uh, this is the first step of a battle, and it's a battle. Uh, we put out today a call to action on popular resistance. You can see it in the slider of our popularresistance.org page. 
urging people to take action because we have to start right now to con build the movement in a deep way to fight this extradition. Uh, and this extradition is not going to be simple. That's why they've reignited the Swedish charges because they, Sweden has an easier extradition treaty with the United States. So it's a, this is a more, a, a big challenge. It's going to be months of fighting, could be months of fighting over the extradition. And if people organize and mobilize, we can impact the outcome of that, that fight. So people should really- I think really the extradition see... case itself will run over many years. I don't it could. think- It could, yeah. that's right. I don't think it's months. I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, Julian Assange would probably exhaust yeah. every appeal possible and it will probably end up in the, in the Supreme Court in, in the UK. And, uh, you know, that will be a lengthy process. Can he, will he be right. incarcerated the entire time? Exactly. Yes, uh, that is very likely because he has skipped bail before and the courts are going to say, how can we trust him yeah. by giving him bail? He's just going to run to another embassy. You well, know, the next so, so they're going to make sure that he will be uh, in jail, he will be offline, he will not have a voice. And uh, that is already a win for the US government because that is really the main objective. They just want to silence him. They want to make sure that he is under control and can no longer harm uh, the US deep state. Uh, another next clever steps. part. Go ahead, go ahead, steps. Kevin. Next two steps from the judge this morning. First, uh, he's going to be, Assange will be sentenced by a higher court for the bail violation. Uh, then second, on May 2nd, is the first extradition hearing. And from then we'll get a better a sense of what the process will be. But I agree with Kim, this is going to be a long process. Unpredictable, but long. And because uh, Assange will fight, he knows that this is a life and death battle. Once he's in the United States and the U.S. Department of Justice has the ability to hold him, uh, and add more charges. Superseding indictments are, are very likely. Uh, Chelsea Manning, I think, you know, now this grand jury involving her should be ending, and so she should be released. I, I'm, I'm not sure on what ground she can remain in, in, in jail because this grand jury's uh, the indictment's now out. Uh, it, it's complete, and uh, she can no longer be held for not testifying for a grand jury. That is, that is finished. So yeah, but he, be here's out. one important thing that we need to observe about Manning. Yeah. I agree with you. Manning now has a strong position to say she, sh uh, she should be released. But we see in the indictment that it is already a, a, a complete case. Why are they still holding on to Manning? Because they would like to uh, uh, file other charges. They need more material. They want Manning to provide more because what they have in this indictment now is very slim. Exactly. It's very flimsy. They need Manning. I don't, they, they've laid out what their evidence is. If they've laid out all their evidence, they don't have a case. Uh, they don't really show. Yeah, I mean, the indictment time. is a joke. It's, it's, it's I, very weak. When it comes yeah. to evidence, it's an absolute disaster exactly. for, actually exactly. for the Department of Justice. So they need Manning. And that's why they're, they were pushing to get her to testify as strong as they did to hold her in contempt and solitary for 27 days. So they needed Manning and they'll need her if there's a trial. But I think that still is a long way away. And I think the key point for us to leave this discussion with today is people have to mobilize. I'm so pleased that we're gonna have a good turnout today in Washington DC at the British Embassy at five o'clock. I'm very pleased that Lee Camp is gonna be, our, the RT uh, journalist is gonna be out there live streaming with us. Uh, so we'll have a, a global audience, and I see other. We're on, on our popular resistance slider on this. We are we provide lists of all of the uh, British embassies in the United States, and we're providing when we find out about other protests, we're putting those up as well from around the world. People are starting to mobilize. I feel a difference now than I did before this happened. Uh, this was always a, people aware of it, but now they're aware it's real. Assange was right. He was facing indictment. He is facing years in prison. It's time for people to mobilize in defense of our right to know, in defense of freedom of the press, in defense of transparency. This is the journalism case for this century. It will define whether we have a free press or not. And so it's important for people to get involved. And it's important for us to tell the corporate media that they have a responsibility to protect the freedom, freedom of the press as well, because they'll be hindered by this if, if it goes forward uh, and Assange is convicted. Well, you know, part of that strategy uh, with this indictment uh, was to 
keep the corporate media on their side, on the government side, and they succeeded. If you read the New York Times account, because it makes very clear in the second paragraph, I believe, that he was not charged with mere possession and dissemination of classified information, i.e. with publishing, but with this charge of hacking into uh, a government computer. All right. yeah. So that, that the, the press breathed a sigh of relief today. You could see it in the pages of the New York Times that, well, they're not going to go after us now because this is not about publishing. This is about hacking. And, uh, and isn't, as, it, isn't, it, isn't yeah. it disgusting? Yes, it is. The news media is now complicit by yes. asking uh, for this extradition and, and framing Julian and dehumanizing him and making him look bad just because their own uh, backs are out of the firing line now with this indictment. It's, it's really a manufactured situation by the U.S. government. They have strategized about this. You know, exactly these things that are happening now are by design. That the fact that they have the media on their side is by design with this flimsy indictment, and the fact that uh, you know Ecuador uh, has gone along with this and can now say, "Yeah, well, it's not all that bad." See, I mean, we're really just trying to help Julian here. He may be yeah. free in in five years or less. I, I mean, this whole thing is a scam, and it's a, it's an insult to any intellectual, any journalist, in fact. You know, uh, uh, to believe that the U.S. government will be satisfied with a minor conviction in a conspiracy to breach a password. And by the way, they are not saying in the indictment that Julian Assange hacked anything. He didn't even have access to this computer, this government computer they are talking about. They are saying Manning had access to this. Manning was the one who was uh, uh, trying to get more data out. And uh, Julian was just a recipient. He's just uh, encouraged his source to provide him with information about uh, war crimes and about uh, the things that uh, the U.S. government is trying to hide. And that is journalism in its essence, where That's a journalist right. encourages the source to provide the story, provide the information. If this is what someone can get indicted for now, then every journalist in the world should be very concerned because you are next to be extradited if you ever write anything truthful about the war crimes and the murdering of civilians and the breaches of human rights by the U.S. government around the world. That's right, Joe. You're, you're a journalist from many years' experience. Is it unusual for a journalist to go to a potential source and urge them to write information? Even classified information, this is not an unusual thing. I mean, this is what journalism should be about. And now they're criminalizing that journalism. And, I, it, you know, if you read that indictment, uh, Assange didn't hack anything. Assange didn't even aid in the hacking of anything. He asked, he asked a, a, a Manning for the, for the password. He didn't provide Manning a password. Uh, so this is like they are prosecuting journalism and calling it hacking. It's a false label in order to convince the New York Times and other corporate media to side with the United States. It's, it's a, it's, and then to bring this, this Swedish case back, you know, this case that was rejected by prosecutors, that they dropped the investigation, and now they bring it back. Why? Character assassination. This is all about undermining Julian in the, in the, in the, in the public view. It's to stop us from mobilizing. This is the kind of character assassination we see when people are doing important work, disclosing crimes, not just the war crimes, which are bad enough, but the corporate crimes. I mean, WikiLeaks has exposed all over the world, corporate crimes, military crimes, crimes against humanity. He has challenged so much through WikiLeaks that the, the states around the world and the big corporations in the world want his skin. And so the character assassination, the phony, flimsy charges, the extradition, this is the, way, this is the way they treat people who are actually doing important work for humanity.